Welcome back to Singapore tonight. Thanks for staying with us. Terrapins are a popular pet choice in Singapore, but what do we really know about that turtle in your tank or the health risks associated with keeping them? I found out more about the kind of impact it's making on our health and environment. Take a look. Gear up, guys. The ninja turtle phenomenon fueled a widespread fascination for turtles. <laughs> but it also spawned a darker story. The rise in popularity of freshwater terrapin hatchlings as pets. The red-eared slider in particular, a factory farmed species from the United States, is exported all over the world in the millions. Many are bound for Asia. It's estimated that since 2006, nearly 9 million have been imported into Singapore alone. Retailing at just a few dollars, these reptiles are regarded as little more than living toys. And studies show the novelty often wears off. As they grow older, a lot of the coloration on the shell fades away, so they're no longer as cute as compared to when you buy them in the beginning. The only responsible thing to do if you don't want to keep your pet anymore is to find somebody to adopt them. But experts say that is one of the least likely things owners do. Instead, terrapins by the thousands have been released into the wild. From the iconic botanic gardens to neighborhood parks and water bodies like McRitchie Reservoir. There's also the belief that releasing animals like birds and turtles boosts one's spiritual karma. Abandoned and vulnerable to being captured or culled, they're left to an unknown fate. Often it's simply because buyers aren't aware of the implications of owning the reptiles. Now, when I first got Minnie 10 years ago, he was no bigger than this. But just look at him now. Now, sliders can live for up to 50 years in captivity, which means there's a distinct possibility that Minnie is going to outlive me. Now, pet shops are supposed to display posters showing the size that sliders can get, but do they? Those I visited across Singapore revealed some surprising results. Now this is the 12th pet shop that I've been to and not one of them has put on display a poster that's required by AVA that tells more about sliders, how to take care of them and just how big they'll grow. But perhaps what's even worse, when asked about health risks associated with sliders, nobody could share this less well-known fact. A bug known as Salmonella. It is passed out or shed in, in their, from their intestines into the feces. And of course, coming into contact with humans, we ingest these bacteria, and of course, in certain levels and amounts, they become toxic. While those exposed may experience symptoms associated with food poisoning, like fever, vomiting, and diarrhea, some infected patients show no obvious signs. Jin Kyung's mother brought him to see the doctor after a fall in the playground left the eight-year-old with a hairline fracture to his ankle. But the fracture wouldn't heal. It seems quite bad, the swollen. At first we thought it's just some blood clots and then it will be clear and everything, then it will um, heal, it will be like just a small surgery or something. Then the doctor was asking, do you actually keep um, small turtles or frogs at home, you know, because kids like to play with such things. So then we realised, ah, oh, we kept two turtles at home in the fish tank. Doctors told the family that Jin Kyung was suffering from a salmonella infection that he'd likely contracted from the pet turtles. Jin Kyung's parents knew nothing of the risks. We bought it from the market, the wet market, so actually nothing was told. I mean, we are not aware of anything. Turtles being so cute, so we never thought that he was actually he carry anything or virus or anything. Jin Kyung needed three operations on his ankle and many weeks of treatment to fight the infection. Cases of salmonella occur around the world in the thousands. We typically associate it with the consumption of contaminated food. According to Singapore's health ministry, there were some 2,000 cases of salmonellosis in 2015. What's not known is how many of those cases were related to transmission from pet terrapins or other reptiles. 
Doctors believe the number of cases in Singapore, rare as they may be, are underreported. For most physicians, we may not even ask these questions about, hey, do you have terrapins or turtles or any other form of reptiles at home, see? The symptoms are mild. It's just dismissed. And we always attribute it to probably something we ate that wasn't very clean or we didn't wash our hands and we just leave it as that. Sliders are regarded as one of the world's 100 most invasive species, with many countries already banning their import and sale. Even in its native United States, cautions about the salmonella connection and strict regulation have been in place since 1975. In one study where they had a recorded uh, 42,000 cases of salmonellosis uh, or salmonella-related infections, 21% uh, of those cases were actually related to reptiles. The culture, the saliva and the fecal material of reptiles, uh, both in the US and in Japan, 75 to 80% of them were actually shedding salmonella. Now, sliders like these were likely released here at McRitchie at some point in time. But the question is, are they really impacting the environment? And are we staring down the barrel of a possible infestation? Any introduced species to uh, native uh, wildlife is bad. Our native species, at the end of the day, they're competing for resources. So far, authorities aren't budging when it comes to repeated calls for a ban on terrapin imports into Singapore. They say there isn't enough evidence to suggest their presence has or will impact Singapore's wildlife. Now, tougher regulation about responsible pet ownership might just give some buyers pause for thought and perhaps go some way to serving as a reminder that that turtle in your tank is more than just a swimming souvenir. Well, it is important to remember, John, that if you do have turtles or terrapins, wash your hands. Mm. That's the most important thing. And as one doctor told me, don't kiss your turtle. <laughs> now, let's not talk about kiss. You know, another animal you don't even want to touch, poss <laughs> uh, possibly, uh, is the monkey. Because the proportion of feedback related to public safety and monkey nuisance has increased, jumping from 62% in 2014 to 77% last year. That is out of the overall feedback the Agri-Food and Veterinary Authority